Good morning. Good morning. How good are morning. you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Good. I feel like we haven't done one together in a while. Is it because you did it with Lori and then I did mine and then... You were traveling. Was I was traveling. Yeah, I feel like it's been a while. It has been. Hi, Lori. Uh, speaking of Lori. <laughs> Lori's on bright and early. We love you. Good morning. Powerful testimony of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, everyone's loving that show. Yeah. Lori. So make sure oh, you let us know. Nice. Make sure you let us know when you deliver your testimony at church and on YouTube so that we yeah. can watch. Yeah. And we can be praying for you too. Yay. Okay, well, today we have a tough topic. So yeah. we're gonna go right to prayer. Yes. Okay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you and we know that you are sovereign over all things and that you allow good and bad to happen on the earth, that what you allow is for your purposes and for your glory and for your agenda. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you that you are a restorer of all things, no matter how evil, no matter how wicked or how traumatic, whatever has happened to us, Lord, you can restore and redeem and you can use us for your glory. And that's what you do, Lord, is you pick us up and you put us back together and you use our testimony for your glory to give you glory. So, Father, we thank you right now for the tragedies that are in our family lines that have that you have used to draw us closer to you. And, Father, we repent for our sin and on behalf of the sins of our families and our ancestors, for those who don't know you, Lord. Um, we repent for those sins, Lord. We repent for idolatry and for putting things ahead of you, Lord. And, Lord, we cannot minister or be an example of Jesus Christ and his love without with with anger in our hearts and vengeance in our hearts and and wickedness and wounds and so lord we ask that you would heal those things and we confess those things as sin to you and we ask that you would heal our wounds so that we can be made whole so that we can love you with our whole heart and our whole mind and our whole souls and that we can minister the grace and the love and the peace that is Jesus Christ our lord and savior Devil, we take authority over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today, and we break and bind the power of witchcraft. All the things that are going on in the air, God knows, and he has allowed, and he is orchestrating those things. Principalities, powers, dominions, thrones, powers of might, you have nothing on Jesus Christ, and we are seated in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father with Christ. And so we are declaring that your plans will not go through unless God wants them to. And so we just take that authority now and we break off all plans for um, this show, this program, this ministry, Rachel's and my families, all people that are connected to us, to Moms and Miracles. We just break off the plans of the enemy. We return cursing, slander, envy, hatred, strife, witchcraft back on the heads of the senders times 10. In Jesus Christ's name, we blind the spying eyes and we loose the angels to shut the mouths of those. And all those that stand in judgment against us will be judged. And so, Father, um, we thank you that you are just and uh, you are loving God. And, Father, um, help us with this subject. Have your spirit be upon us as we bring forth this subject, which is tough and convicting. And um, we just ask, Father, that you minister to your people through your spirit today. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Well, you guys will remember a few weeks ago. We did a show on divorce and remarriage and what does Jesus say about remarriage? And everybody wants an answer. Can I get remarried? Was I wrong to get remarried? Should people get married two times, four times, seven times, ten times? Um, everybody wants an answer. But the answer is simple. It's not a, well, she did it two times and I did it once. So am I forgiven? Or I'm at three and she's at two or they're at four. It's not like that with Keeping God. Tally. No, God's no respecter of persons. All God wanted me to tell you guys that day was tell them they're forgiven. Tell them they are forgiven. Divorce is a sin that is forgiven. Mm -hmm. Now, sin, the wages of sin is death. So there is consequence to sin, but this show is going to be not about your kids. So if you've had a divorce, been divorced, 
gone through a divorce, have parents who are divorced. This isn't about, oh, what have I done to my kids? This is about you having divorce in your bloodline. All of us do. Having divorce in our bloodline, um, God wants to show you why and how to how to get free. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about this in terms of, oh my gosh, I'm so horrible. Look what I've done to my kids. This is a show for you so you can understand what the devil has done to our families and how God wants to set us free. Now, I bought this book a couple years ago. I don't remember what I was reading, but I've purchased mm-hmm. it for many, many people now. Mm-hmm. And we were going to do a show last fall with what I thought was an adult child of divorce, but her parents were never divorced. Mm. But when I interviewed her and the date and the timing never worked out. So unfortunately she isn't going to be a guest for that show. But um, when I interviewed her and kind of what the Lord had been showing her as she read through the book, she said she felt as though she was a child of divorced, mm. of divorce, even though her parents never were divorced. So that gave me the go ahead. This is definitely spiritual implications of these things. Yeah. So a divorce, you guys, is the dissolving of a formal bond of marriage. And we talked all about scripture. Um, I don't know if Rach can put a link to that show that we did. A few weeks now or, but we talked all about the scripture and what Jesus said about it. And I can tell you, and you're not supposed to give personal revelation as doctrine, but I can tell you what the Lord showed me when I went to the Lord and said, what am I supposed to tell these moms who are writing us and they're broken because they feel like they're, they're divorced and they can't be, they can't be used of you. Mm-hmm. And he, he showed me the woman at the well mm-hmm. and she had been with five men And the man she was with at the well was not her husband. So she was in adultery. Jesus is talking to her. She's in actual adultery, living with a man who's not her husband. Mm -hmm. And there's five of them. And she got to run back and tell the entire country or village of Samaria Mm -hmm. about Jesus Christ. And that's recorded in the Bible. So don't think you can't be used for his glory. Amen. Amen. And then another thing that breaks my heart is when teachers absolutely tell you your future by telling you that you can't do something. We are all accountable to the Lord. We all have personal decisions to make and you alone will stand before God. And so if you feel peace in your heart or if you feel God has brought you another spouse to marry, who are we to say he hasn't? True. Because I know people personally that tell me on a second marriage, they met each other online at AOL.com and God led them to each other and they got married. So who are we to tell them that's not true? You shouldn't have. You're not worthy. And then Mm -hmm. the hypocrisy of denying. Well, anyway, I won't even go there. Can't go to hypocrisy today. That's another show. (laughs) Um, it's so funny you brought up the woman at the well because I had posted this yesterday in our Facebook. This is the longest conversation is recorded in the Bible was was with a broken woman at the well. The woman you just spoke to spoke yep. about. Yep. The longest conversation, Jesus, that's recorded in the Bible was with her. Yep. And I think that has a lot to say, even though you know the Bible doesn't specifically talk about certain things, it does in a way. So um Jesus says, you are forgiven. Jesus Mm -hmm. says you are forgiven. And I just want to say a quick um, hi to our precious friend, Larry. Larry, we've got some shows for you coming up, my friend. (laughs) Starting next week, you're going to want to be on. You'll enjoy them. Okay, so back to this. Mm -hmm. This is a book called Between Two Worlds, The Inner Lives of Children of Divorce. Now, I just want to tell you what I did when I read this book. Um, I felt led to interview some kids. Now, I don't know. You might want to pray about this. I don't know if God uses you in this capacity, but I have always been called to children. Since I was a kid, I volunteered in Bible school. I love kids. 
I've just always, when I was a senior, I was a volunteer for fifth grade band. Like I've just always been called to kids. And I, I wanted to interview these kids, not about, hey, how do you feel that mommy and daddy are separated, but just talk to them, right? Because kids like yeah. to talk. Mm -hmm. So if you sit down and you have a conversation with kids and you get them talking, and then maybe you throw in a pointed question like, who do you worry more about, daddy or mommy? You will find out pretty quickly what that kid's um, spiritual hangups are, what their wounds are, and how to pray for them. It's really insightful if you can just take a few minutes and just talk to kids, especially um, kids that are victims of divorce. Because, mm -hmm. and then, you know, our friend Michelle, Michelle has All Things Made New, which is a nonprofit that helps at risk children graduate high school and go to college and make a life for themselves. But see, all children are at risk these days. All, all children are at risk. And so Michelle is the adult daughter of a divorced family. Her family got divorced when she mm -hmm. was nine and look what God made of her life. So don't think that you can't be used of God because you have, there's no tick mark, right? The only unforgiven, the only unpardonable sin in the Bible is the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. And that means that you're calling what God is, you're calling Satan. That's it. Mm -hmm. okay. Divorce is a forgivable sin. If you divorce 18 times and you repent 18 times, your sin is forgiven 18 times. Okay. I like so, the title of this book. I saw it yesterday, how to talk. So kids will listen and listen. So kids will talk. Yeah. Um, this is a secular book. I don't know anything about it, but I like, so the title of, I like the title a lot. So if you're going down this path, go ahead and check out JC's book that she's reading. Maybe take a look at this one. Look at the reviews. Um, and but you can I even just, email me for the questions I asked the kids too. Yeah. And I just saw this title of this book uh, just yesterday. Perfect. See how God lines things up. Mm -hmm. So divorce in America, just to give you guys a few facts, divorce in America has outpaced the rest of the world. It's actually at a, you have a, I just looked at the statistic this morning. Um, it's approximately 50% of all children in the U S will witness their parents divorce at some point in their childhood, in their first, basically they're saying not only will they experience it in the, their mom and dad, but possible mom, stepdad, you know what I mean? Oh, 50%. Yeah. So they have a 50, 50 chance. That's huge. That's really high. It is. Um, what's interesting is I, some things I've never thought about divorce is not the end. It's the beginning. Like so that. in the lives of children, and you may be the adult child of, of a divorced family, or you may have divorce, like Rachel said, in your family somewhere, divorce is not the, the end. Divorce is the beginning. It changes your childhood. So now the childhood is on a different track. And as we go through some of these wounds, we're going to pray deliverance at the end. And we're going to repent on behalf of the sins of our families um, because your soul is literally split. You're physically divided. Your families are divided. And that makes your soul divided. And when I asked those little kids that day, when I asked them, who do you, who do you worry about more, mommy or daddy? One said mommy, one said daddy. Mm -hmm. I mean even within, there was division, even there wasn't unity anymore. One worried about daddy and thought mommy was mean. One worried about mommy and thought daddy was mean. So there's a lot of wounds here that come from divorce. Divorce changes your childhood. Divorce changes things. You become divided and the image of yourself is divided. Who do I belong to? Where do I belong? And belonging Belonging is a huge thing. You belong to Jesus Christ. And there's a difference between, I saw a great meme this week on fitting in versus belonging. Mm -hmm. If you, you want to fit in, you want to wear the world's clothes and hang out with the cool kids. If you want to fit in, you're conforming to the world. But if you want to belong, you're just who you are as you are. You wear what you want and think what you want. You're, you belong to the kingdom of heaven. We all belong. Divorce, physical divorce, separates you from your belonging. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Rach, if you're, I know you're looking at some, if you want to, you're probably searching, what's belong? Like there's got to be a deeper meaning oh, yeah. to belong to something. You're of that. God birthed us. You're of that, right? You belong to him. Mm -hmm. 
So um, children become insiders and outsiders in each new world. Talk about division. So you're, you're an insider because you still share the same characteristics as your parent and as your siblings, but you're an outsider because maybe there's blended families or maybe dad has a girlfriend or mom has a boyfriend and they brought other kids. Um, I was, um, I had a conversation with a precious little eight year old the other day and she, she was just flatlined. She, Mm -hmm. I've never met a kid more zero emotion in my life. I don't know Mm -hmm. if she was, I don't know if she was on meds. I don't know what it was, but she was like, if you could be flatline, no joy, no anger, just false peace, you know, mm. that's what she was. And I was trying to, I was just talking to her and I was trying to get her to say anything. And those kind of kids say stuff like, I don't remember. And I don't know because mm-hmm. they don't trust. They can't open up. Everything is, they're totally vulnerable. They just wear all their wounds on there. It's like, they're almost inside out they feel, Mm -hmm. you know, and so you can't, they won't let you touch them because everything hurts. Mm -hmm. And I said to this little girl, are you going to have a good weekend? And she said, "Mm, I'm going to get to go to my dad's, which I'm happy about, but my dad's roommate has kids that she brings and she yells at them all weekend. Mm -hmm. So it's really loud. So we all know dad's roommate is a new girlfriend probably with kids Mm -hmm. that, you know, and that's, you know, I'm really happy I get to see my dad, but it's going to be noisy. There's now there's, there's a consequence to seeing dad. And so now there's a bad taste in your mouth to see your father because of this other thing. And this is the fallout of divorce. And again, if you're popping on right now, welcome. This is not to shame anyone. This is not to Mm -hmm. convict you. The Holy Spirit convicts. This is to say, hey, this is why this happens. Let's get healed and let's stop it in our generations. And let's forgive people who are going through it and who can't stop it, you know, because of what one reason or the, or the other. So the, um, yeah, go this ahead. was just a quick fitting in versus belonging. Mm. Are you fitting in or are you belonging? Fitting in, being accepted for being like others, being somewhere where your authentic self isn't valued, requiring you to hide or change your true self, being in an environment that you think you want to be in and a feeling of loneliness and disconnectedness inside. Wow. So this was, this was pretty much my whole life Mm -hmm. till, till 45 when God gave us moms and started us on this journey. And, um, that was probably my whole life. That's why I post on Facebook because people wouldn't like it or someone didn't notice me or, um, yeah, I'm sorry, Larry, I'm reading this. Gary has leukemia and a fungus in his brain. He started chemo at nine 30 last night. I'm reaching out to all channels. Well, Larry, we just did a show with Lori, how God delivered her from leukemia. So please send Gary that and we'll be praying for him too. We'll, we'll yeah. pray for him at the end of the show. And I know Lori's probably praying now. Um, and, and belonging is you're accepted for who you are. You don't have to change anything. And, and I just want to point this out because this just happened before the show this morning. I feel like the Lord might want us to do a show on friendship Mm. because I don't think people understand what friendship is. And Mm -hmm. I think the only reason I think the reason Jesus is called our, our friend is because he's the example of our friend. <laughs> yeah. And a friend doesn't tell your secrets. A friend doesn't dominate you, doesn't intimidate you, doesn't manipulate you. A friend is 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 a friend is there for you when you need them, not when they need you. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, that might be something too. And maybe that's part of this, I don't know. But think about the the loneliness that children of divorce have because they don't have a friend. They don't trust their parents because their parents have betrayed each other. They don't Mm -hmm. trust their siblings because the siblings have taken sides. So everything becomes divided. There's no sense of belonging. Um, The child thinks a a child thinks of parents as one unit, even though mom Mm -hmm. and dad are two, they think of parents as one unit when that's fractured. um, There's a statistic that says that married kids think they're, when they grow up, they recall thinking that their parents had the same opinions. Yeah. 
complementary opinions. Divorced kids can tell you, oh, no, mom hated this and dad liked that, even though that might not be true because my, my husband and I have very different opinions, but it's just the, um, it's the unity that God brings through the holy covenant of marriage. Mm-hmm. That's probably responsible for that. Another thing that happens is the income of women and children plummet. So the income, um, you may have been living okay, but as a single mom where women still get paid less in the workplace, you may be struggling to make ends meet or mom may have to have a job now where she didn't have a job and there's a lot more loneliness and there's a lot more alone time for children. Mm -hmm. And then with, with alone time, I mean, they say idleness is the devil's playground, right? So Mm -hmm. kids are hanging out alone and what are they doing? Um, Another thing that separates, it separates children from daily life with their fathers because God is showing us how important the role of the man is. Mm -hmm. And even if the man is working until six o'clock and then comes home, even if the man works until six o'clock, comes home, cracks a beer and isn't living your Christian life, right? It's still, there's still something biblical. There's still something holy that God has placed in the role of man. His presence is there. Yeah. He's a provider. It's a role. Yeah. It's not, oh, dad drinks beer, so he's not a Christian. It's not that. We have to shed some yeah. of that religious veneer. Yeah. His, he's still a dad. He's still a provider. He's still the strength in the home. Yeah. Whether he's doing it biblically or not biblically. Right. When I was looking up statistics, it said uh, the number one, you want to know what the number one cause of divorce is? What do you think? Just off the top of your head. Um, cheating. Yeah, that could go along with this. It's commitment. Uh, it's the number one cause of divorce. Um, where was it? Yeah, commitment. And then um, I thought that was interesting because, you know, it says in the Bible, commitment means to entrust oneself to God or to give something over to him and to depend on him. Mm-hmm. There's verses given. But that's what the I think the children feel immediately after that divorce happens. If that is the reason, commitment, their commitment to the the the, the mom and dad's commitment to the family, the the covenant that they meant, everything's just broken. I think that's I mean you could do a whole word study on just the word commitment and well, really tackle yeah. those wounds. Yeah. Um, and I think today we need to, right now, we need to recommit our lives to Jesus Christ because mm-hmm. we are his bride. Rachel, that show that you did on Are You Married to Christ is my yeah. favorite show ever. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, my gosh. What a powerful show. I'm well, so I guess that kind of goes with you. this because if, if families and marriages aren't committed to God first, that's why lust comes in, um, cheating comes in, all this stuff. Because if we can't, if the mom and dad can't be committed to God first, and then, you know, naturally it comes being committed to each other. It's just a downward fall. Yes. And Trudy, that's right. We talked about that in a couple, a couple shows ago. It's their hardness of hearts. The reason mm-hmm. Moses let them divorce was because of their hardness of hearts. And because of their hardness of hearts, they can't commit. They don't want to commit. It's not just Mm -hmm. men, but yes. Um, Wow. And so I I encourage you guys, catch up on a couple shows. Are You Married to Christ? Uh, Last week's show was awesome. Um, I wanted to be on that show so bad. I just was like, oh, I want to talk about this. (laughs) It was so good. Oh, good. And then Um, the show that we did, Trudy, about... um, the biblical, the scriptures on what Jesus says about divorce. And he says, we're forgiven. And that's that we have to come from a place of grace right now because it's so overwhelming in the church that if we don't have grace, God can't minister because walls go up because we come at him with judgment. You can't get married. You did this. You're wrong. And the thing that I'm really regretting in my ministry over the past five years is that I have told, I have said to people they're wrong for one stance or the other. I have believed because I didn't seek the truth out for myself. I believed what a teacher said and I called people wrong 
And I don't believe we should ever call people wrong because we'll all stand and give account. And calling people wrong does nothing but put up walls. Yeah. And just yesterday, God was reminding me of what I would have missed out if I would have stayed in that hardness of heart. And I was almost, it was just in the store. I was in the store with Armando and I just, it just flooded me like what could have happened if I would have kept that hardness of heart. Not only one time, I think almost three times now that we were that close to just, you know, calling it quits. And, well, and I think, yeah, Rachel and her family were on the road to divorce because she was out, she was out of order. Mm -hmm. We didn't understand how a biblical house is run. And so women get upset with women are drawn to Christ and women want to go to church and women get upset when their husbands don't and aren't called and aren't moving in the way that we think they should move. And so we just take over the spiritual work of the husbands and it upsets the family unit to a point where there's witchcraft control. Mm -hmm. And what was happening was domination, manipulation, and intimidation. That's witchcraft control. Mm -hmm. That comes in when you upset the apple cart. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's the fault of us because we didn't study the Bible. It's the fault of our ancestors. It's the fault of pastors and teachers who didn't, who don't teach the word correctly. It's everybody's fault. Mm -hmm. We're big sinners. We're saved by grace. Right. But I'm glad we can be open and honest about that because yeah. now we know it's not just because your husband's an a-hole. It's, you know, how many times do you hear people say that? Yeah. How are their names? No, that's not why. They're not those names. They're not those people. It's because you're out of order. Yeah. And order is not easy to get into. No. And the more I've yielded and submitted to my husband's authority, the more opinions he seems to have about things <laughs> that I do and say. Yeah. Well, that's good. He's having a voice or uh -huh. maybe he did it feel like he had a voice and, and JC no. is repenting and, he, and humbling herself <laughs> because I'm like <laughs> I don't know how many times the Holy Spirit told me will you just be quiet and listen to him and I'm like oh <laughs> will you oh, listen yes. in between the lines what he's saying oh he told me yeah. something this morning that I did and I was so mad but he's right and I went to the Lord and I said I'm so mad Lord Lord I'm so mad you got to help me with this anger. Where's this anger yeah. from? I'm so and mad. Going back to it, you say women, people calling their husbands assholes, whatever, whatever they want to say about them. That man, or even that woman, whatever, who's calling who what. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> they're acting out of wounds. They're trying to get back into order, and they're screaming out in the only way they know they can either right. by control or they're drinking more or, and we've said this before on shows, but we see those, those, those are added uh, actions to add to our fuel and our, um, our case that they are being an a-hole, right? But yeah. actually they're trying to get an order and they don't, they're trying to get control back these men, but they don't know how else to do it. You know? Well, yes. And this is, this is a hard thing. Um, but to continue on, I really want to go somewhere else, but I'm going to continue yeah. on. The Lord was like pushing me back on this subject because we don't, we only have one week of this. Um, <laughs> but I will, we will return to the marriage and you'll hear about our uh, examples of things in our households that are going on. Um, okay. The income of women separates children from daily life with their fathers. Right. Um, then you have something else. If they're separated and parents continue, parents maybe are doing dating or social lives. Well, now you've got all new kinds of things coming in, like fornication into the household, mm -hmm. um, which kids aren't emotionally able to understand. Mm -hmm. Parents that are dating other parents. Um, this is one child said that they never felt like they could trust the parent with their stuff. So they just picked up their stuff and transferred from one house to the other. Mm. They never had a home again. So they were, they became a nomad. They became an outsider. Mm. Now that's interesting because the Bible 
talks about the curse of the the bastard or someone that's that has a child out of wedlock mm-hmm. not being able to enter into the congregation for 10 generations well that's what that sounds like you can't enter into the congregation to your family unit you can't feel a part of this family and you can't feel a part of that family and now as a kid you're a nomad mm-hmm. you have no place that's so interesting you say it like that because i was looking at some stuff this morning and this lady her her um, website's called Hope for Hurting Kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll share the link, but she has an article on the Bible and children of divorce. She basically, not to say tore the Bible apart, but she wanted to see if there were any scriptures about children of divorce. There's mm-hmm. none. And she says that, but she says that does not mean that God doesn't have a lot to say about children. And she, her conclusion was that Children of divorce are our modern day orphans that God talks about in the Bible. All those verses of the about the orphans, that's our orphans today. He's mm-hmm. the God of all knowing, right? So he knew divorce was going to be a pandemic today, right? Mm-hmm. He knew that. So um, I'll share her uh, link. But I thought that was like, oh, that's so interesting that she called it the children of divorce are modern day orphans. And just how you said it, they're picking up their stuff, going house to house to house. Yeah. They have no, they have no sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. The children of divorce need a sense of belonging. And so even if you're an adult child of divorce or your grandma's divorced or anything like that, um, from birth, children begin to absorb their parents' values by listening to their parents' words and observing their act, their actions. It's a background noise that children have without even realizing it. Mm-hmm. And they rarely think about those values until they grow up and have their own kids. And then they're like, oh, I see why my mom did this. I see why dad said that. Um, but yeah, that's they don't have that background vo- voice. Even if it's... <clears throat> God can save all people, even if it's a secular household and they're living morally where they say, you know, don't steal and don't lie, that kind of stuff. You you still don't have that background. And see, don't steal and don't lie in a secular, unsaved household is still the Ten Commandments. Yeah. How religious we are. We think God can't operate in families like that. Right. He does. He absolutely does. One of my friends, oh, Rachel's frozen. Bring her back right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Devil, bring her back. We cancel all that against her in Jesus' name. Um, one of our good friends was raised in an atheist home, and Jesus visited her when she was age four. Now, she grew up. She, she didn't get saved till she was in her 20s, but she Jesus came to her when she was four. So, I mean, don't think that God can't operate in secular households. That's so interesting you say that because I was going to send this clip to you when I was traveling and I forgot. But I don't know if you remember that show a while ago. It's called Wife Swap, where two moms switch families. I go to I made, it, yeah. I it. Oh, I used to watch it all the time. And this one caught my eye. It was on TikTok. I'll just share it on our Facebook page because I think we should kind of dissect this uh, episode. But it's a Christian mom who's actually a leader in her church oh. against a, a bona fide witch and her family and they switch and it's interesting the the mom who's a christian immediately takes authority over the home because she walks in they have baphomets on the wall total satanic altars right that it's a dad and two kids that she's going to take over right um it's interesting she immediately knows what she's gotten herself what kind of home she's in she immediately takes over authority over the house The witch mom that goes in the house, she immediately, repeatedly says, I'm so scared. She keeps saying she's afraid. I thought that was so interesting. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah, I'll send you the the link to it. But what what I thought was beautiful at the end, because when the Christian mom, because granted, we're going to have religious spirits in us. She did an amazing job, right? But once she kind of let her Christian, I mean, sorry, her religious walls down. Yeah. She's in the kitchen with the, the dad who's a, who's a warlock. He even says, I'm a warlock. Um, she's there in the kitchen cooking, preparing dinner, and they start talking. And they both related that they were children of divorce. And they start talking about the function of how their 
childhood was and how much they related on. I thought that part was the most beautiful part when that mom, I want to say she was a, the pastor, a pastor's wife, but, um, Oh, and not only that, they were deliverance pastors. And they even say in our church, we cast out demons. In our church, we uh, go after the demons that turn people to witchcraft. They they, they are deliverance church. That was a nice nod for deliverance on TV. Yeah, and um, it's just really interesting. So I'll send the link, I'll make sure on the Facebook page. But yeah, I think you're right, because you talked about the religious walls. And But the dad had a true heart for his children. And that's not to say that he won't become saved one day. He loved his children. He worked hard for his children. He was making them dinner. He was a presence in their home. Just like you said, just because they weren't a godly family, they were bona fide witches. But God right. still, his values were still there. Right. Whether you choose to accept that or not, they were there in that dad. Right. And to see that Christian mom and that dad who was a warlock break down and be honest and truthful with each other. And she straight up said, well, that's what drew me closer to God was because I didn't have a father. And it's interesting. That's what drew him to Satan because he didn't have a father. You had, you had a choice, two different fathers to go to, your heavenly father or, you know, Satan, the father. Yeah. And just so you guys know, witchcraft is the sin of rebellion. So there's a, there's a dad living in a satanic home, probably unsaved, right? And he's um, cooking dinner for his kids. Like he's doing, he's doing the right things for his kids, but he's not living righteously because he's in rebellion. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, 1 Samuel 15, 23. And you can cast it out. You can tell it to go. Mm -hmm. um that's a great point rach i love that um just to stay on track here so we can start praying at nine. Oh yeah i forgot you have to there's there's very dramatic differences there could be dramatic differences i can't tell you the number of moms and uh valgina has a question too i can't tell you the number of moms that have written us that say um my ex-husband is dating a witch or he allows porn. He watches porn with my kids in the living room. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, that's child abuse. Okay. Children should not be subject to that. Um, It's child abuse. And so then you've got like, you've got all these new things that you have to deal with within divorce sometimes. Um, Valgina. Hi, by the way, we love you. Good to see you. So she's asking if children are born out of wedlock, is that still connected to the no man? Um, Well, it just depends. Like you have different situations in the Bible. First, you have rape. So you have rape where children are born out of wedlock. Then you have, uh, you have um, children born out of wedlock, out of passion, out of lust, out of adultery. Um, What the Bible says about it is if you're born out of wedlock, because God has an order and a covenant for everything. If you're born out of wedlock, there's a curse on on you. And it's called basically the curse of the bastard. A bastard is someone that doesn't belong. So if you've grown up going from church to church, and every time you have a little bit of conflict or somebody rubs you the wrong way, you're like, I'm out of here. That's because you don't fit in anywhere. So you just, the minute you rise against, the minute you meet conflict, you have to escape. There's no sense of belonging. There's no root in you. There's no, there's no root to be able to say, you know what, this is a conflict, but I'm going to work it out because this is my stance and I can still love you and your stance. The bastard, the person who's born out of wedlock doesn't have that. They have no sense of belonging. There's a curse. Curses can be broken. Jesus Christ became a curse for us. We can command in his name and we're going to command that today. We're going to break that curse today of the curse of the bastard. And you can't enter into any place of belonging. You can't have a close group of friends. You can't be in a family unit and be loved and be content. You can't go to a church because somebody ticks you off and you're out. You you quit a bunch of jobs because somebody ticks you off and you're out. It's, it's, I don't know if that answers her question. And, And with the curse of the bastard, if you are born out of wedlock, there's no commitment. If you have sex, if you have sex with a man and you get pregnant and you're not married, what commitment does the man have to stay? It's again, it's a commitment issue. I think the reason God calls the marriage holy 
is because you have to rely on him to commit to it for the for the entire duration of your life. He knows how wishy washy we are. And you know, we are <laughs> uncommitted. I mean, look at your New Year's resolutions that we're not supposed to make. Look at your dieting wishes, right? I mean, how many times do we go on a diet and break it? How many times do we try this and break it? We can't, we cannot continue in one thing in our lives except following Christ because there's always going to be seasons there and seasons change. The only thing that is sure in our life is that Jesus Christ is our eternity. He's our hope. He's our destiny. And he's our friend. That's the only surety that we have in our life. Mm -hmm. That's why his word says it's better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. He even says, don't even, that's why we don't like New Year's resolutions. We didn't don't even show. attempt it. You we can't, did. y'all can't keep it anyway. <laughs> we did a show on it like three years ago. Um, so. Y'all can't keep it anyway, he says. Don't even make it. That's what he says. But there's hope, okay? There's hope. Another thing that children of divorce, they're asked to keep secrets. They have to become chameleons. Mm-hmm. They, they, being, having a secret is a big deal. It's, and, and when you start manipulating, when, when parents start manipulating, like, don't tell your mom, mm-hmm. you can do it over here, Timmy, but don't tell your mom. Mm-hmm. Secrets create division in your soul. It sears your conscience. You're, you're holding on to things that are against maybe what God's put in you, and they, they come against your conscience. And if you override and sear your conscience, then you open up whole pathways to sin. You're never supposed to sear your conscience. And the, the world calls it, the world calls God universe. And the world says, well, if you can sleep at night, then you know you've made the right decision. Like there are these spirits that are uh, supposing spirits. They suppose, what did she call them? Presupposing? There's a, there's a sin, the sin of, of presuming it's a presumption. Yeah. There's a sin of presuming. Well, I'm not supposed to do this on the clock, but I'm right here. I might as well grab it while I'm here, but I'm not supposed to, but I'm about to be off in two minutes. Like you see these, no, you're not supposed to do it on the clock. Don't do it. Wait the two minutes and then do it. And it's validating your sin. Yeah. There's these validating your sin. Exactly. And so you're rationalizing, well, I don't want to hurt mom by telling dad. And then you're, you're overriding your moral compass. And then you, you start to do bigger and bigger sins. It's. Well, and then that's where, I mean, you watch any, um, what's it called? Serial killer special. They sleep well at night. So that don't mean sit that um, I didn't say. Right. (laughs) I I totally did not say that. That doesn't Um, mean anything. It sounded like it, but I didn't say that, but I'm just for saying, the sake mean anything. For the sake of for the sake of this though, it's it's that's that's the example. If it bothers you, you need to stop, drop, mm-hmm. and listen. Yeah. And kids are being forced to be to kids are having that forced upon them. They they're not able to make those decisions. Well, they're being um, forced to be a vault for their mom or dad's emotions and they can't uh, handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then there's a problem. There are, there's a lot of alcoholic patterns in families mm-hmm. and sometimes one parent or the other has alcoholic problems that cause them anger, cause them to yell and kids are kind of protected from the other parent. And it's not even drinking. You can have alcoholic patterns in dry families too. It's um, spending habits, yeah. yeah, spending habits, yelling, response, anger, abuse. Um, and one parent will protect the other kids. Well, when the when divorce happens, that protection lifts and then everything's out in the open and it's mm-hmm. ugly. And then that that punching bag isn't there anymore and it becomes the kids. Yeah. So it transfers. It's damage that's, control's gone. Yeah. So mm-hmm. and that's that's hard, too. Um even they call successful. First of all, there's no good divorce. There's no successful divorce. Um, divorce is divorce. Marriage is a picture of Jesus and the church. 
Jesus is the husband, the church is the bride. There is no Greek or Jew. There is no male or female. We're all spirit. So all spirit together as one is the body of Christ married to Jesus Christ. Okay. We are his bride. That's why God doesn't like divorce. God hates divorce. Um, but God says we're forgiven. So you have to have grace and, and in order to minister to other people and those who are divorced, who God has healed you. I mean, please speak up and give us some testimony so that we can share it with other people because a lot of people just feel that they can't even be used of God anymore. And you have to forgive your parents. You have to forgive their parents. You have to forgive your siblings. You have to forgive your teachers. Anyone that you thought would stop it, that couldn't stop it, you have to forgive them because God allowed it to happen and he's in charge of you. Um, you Kids expect other people to jump in and save them, but only God can save us. Mm -hmm. And I think... I think we'll end there and we'll go to prayer. Okay. I think we answered. Thank you, Valgina. It makes sense to her. Okay, good. Good. That was a great question. Just going through, making sure we got all the questions. Okay. Anything else, Rach, you want to add before we go to prayer? No, I don't think so. Okay. Let me just kind of go through my notes and we'll kind of pray through this a little bit. So Heavenly Father, thank you that all sin is forgiven, Lord. Thank you that divorce is forgiven. Thank you that we are not separated from you because we have divorced or because we've divorced or because we've married a million times. Thank you, Father, that your mercies are fresh every day. Father, we ask for mercy in America because America has outpaced the Western world. And Lord, um, we just ask for your spirit. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your wisdom. We know that you are the God of the individual. And so, Father, we ask that you would draw all those who are yours by your spirit. The Bible says that no man comes to the Father except by the spirit who draws him. So if you want to pray for someone's salvation, you ask for God to draw them okay. with the spirit. Father, regarding the division in all of us, because of the sins of uh, divorce in our in our bloodlines, Lord, we just repent right now in Jesus Christ's name. We repent for having children out of wedlock. We repent for uh, the abortions. We repent, we repent right now for infidelity, for adultery. Um, Rachel did a great show about how adultery it, idol adultery is idolatry. Divorce is terrible to God because when you leave him right and you go out you're in you're in adult you're in idolatry so to speak a spiritual idolatry and rachel explained that biblically and scripturally last week so watch that show but father um we repent for the sins of adultery the sins of idolatry making ourselves our own gods going our own way ignorance we didn't know some of us didn't know Father, we repent for listening to the voices in our head, the presumptuous sin that we could, that we can, that we're justified. We ask forgiveness for that, Lord. And right now we recommit our lives to you, Jesus. We don't make vows, but we recommit our lives, creating us clean hearts. Help us to overcome just as you overcame sin and temptation. Father, we ask that you heal the division within our souls, our minds, our will, our emotions. And we cast out all spirits that live in them that forbid the um, coming together of us. Uh, that, that live in the cracks and the crevices that won't let us come together as whole. We cast you out right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come against the spirits of divorce. Leave now in Jesus Christ's name. We come against the spirits of rebellion and witchcraft. I don't want to follow my husband. I don't want to get in line. Maybe you're on the brink of divorce and you're like, what happened to JC and Rachel that Rachel didn't, that they didn't get divorced and they're listening to their husbands and they're having the marriages they've always prayed for. What happened? Well, you need to you need to watch the show or email us and, and find out because God can do it for you, too. It's just his grace and his mercy. Um, Father, we come against that spirit of not belonging and wanting to fit into the world. God says in Romans 12 two, do not be conformed to the image of this world, but be ye transformed by the reading of the word. You have to come apart from the world, from the world. We, we fashion ourselves around the world. We want to do what the world 
does. And I mean, look at us. We're surrounded by the world's stuff. We have the world's phone and, and we have the world's pretty coffee cups and we have the world's stuff. We're surrounded by the world, but we can't put the world before God. God says it's okay to enjoy the blessings I've given you. It's not okay to put them above me. So we have to be real careful every day with our hearts, with idolatry. We have to cast these things down in our hearts, the images that we think we have. And the image of a perfect family is an idol. I had to smash it in mine. So I come against you, I smash the idol of the perfect family. I loose the angels to break that down. Tear that down in your heart right now. There is no such thing. Tear that idol down off that altar in Jesus Christ's name. And we close every portal with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we confess that as sin. We come against being an insider and an outsider. We come against that. No, we belong to the to Jesus Christ, our Lord. We belong in the kingdom of heaven. We are not outsiders. We are not losers. We have we it, it, we don't belong here. This is not our world, but we belong in the kingdom of heaven. We are part of God. So we come against that. Come out right now in Jesus Christ's name. Becoming off balance because um, there's two separate. There's different places that you live becoming nomadic. Father, I ask that you heal the wounds of the nomad right now, that you would heal the heart, the broken heart. I never had a place. I don't feel like anyone likes me. I don't have anyone I can trust. I come out, come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, having to handle things that you are not emotionally ready for. Father, we just ask that you would heal, that you would bring your wisdom, your clarity, your wrap your arms around these people, Lord, and heal all of these things terrible, tragic situations, especially even in Christian homes where Christianity becomes so puffed up in its own, you become so puffed up in your own self-righteousness that you hurt people because you think you know the mind of God. We, we confess that as sin too. I confess that as sin that we become so puffed up in our own knowledge of uh, an understanding of God that we hurt people with it. The word is never to hurt. It's to divide. It's to conquer. It's to heal. Um, it hurts sin, but it shouldn't hurt us as God's people. We shouldn't be using the word to hurt each other. So we confess that as sin too, beating people over the heads with the Bibles and telling people they're wrong when they're living perfectly godly lives in multiple, having had multiple marriages. Um, what else? Father, we ask that you restore. I'm just going to ask big today. Lord, I know that the world is going to get darker and darker and darker and darker. We know that we are to shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Lord, I know there's no revival coming to America. I know there's revival coming to your people. No. I know that countries, um, you can do what you want, Lord. I prayed for it for years. You could bring revival to America if you want, but America seems to be getting darker to me. Um, Father, I'm asking for revival it within your people around the world. I'm asking that you, Jesus Christ, would shine your light into these people Save them where they are today as we confess our sins. You are just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. Father, I ask that you turn these people's lives upside down and right side up. Father, I ask that you heal all of the wounds and all of the brokenness and all of the darkness. And Father, I ask that you show them that Jesus Christ is our only friend. Our only friend, what a friend we have in Jesus is true because he is our only friend. He is the only friend who never manipulates, never intimidates, never dominates, never controls us never judges us and, and hates us for who we are, but he loves us. And he doesn't, he doesn't get angry when we bring sin to him. He doesn't get angry at us. He doesn't, um, he's not violent. He's loving, he's kind, and he is our, he is our only friend. And so father, I just ask that you would show people that they're not alone, that you would heal their wounds and heal their, heal the diseases that come from divorce too. We come against mm. um, disease that comes from divorce, all the brokenheartedness, all the loneliness, all the languishing, all the anger and the violence, uh, the, the gritting of the teeth, father, we just come against all those spirits that live there and that lips, teeth and tongue that love anger and love violence and violence begets violence within a home. And we come against that and we lose love, agape love, that you would show them that you are their all in all, that you are the everlasting God, and the everlasting king. Now we come against witchcraft, that spirit of witchcraft and rebellion. The worst thing that Ahab ever did was marry Jezebel. And so we come against these um, 
presupposed and preordained by the devil, these marriages that uh, the devil has made claims to certain people to, to bring them into Christian homes to upset these things. And we break that off right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We cut, break, and sever all demonic and satanic ties, all, de all demonic and satanic worship, and all worship that demons have gotten from us out of our rebellion. We confess as sin, Lord, and we cast down those idols, and we tear down those altars today in Jesus Christ's name. Rach, is there anything else? Uh, yeah, I just come against that fear in either yourself or... Or maybe that you feel maybe have been planted into your children that they won't get married because they fear marriage. So um, I just come against that spirit that wouldn't allow because that's Satan's uh, main goal is to tear down that family unit, that family structure. Yeah. He doesn't want marriages to happen. He doesn't want men and women to be together, therefore having children. So um I mean, because you can see it because everything that's getting promoted is gay marriages, uh, transgender. I mean, marriages that are out of order. Yeah, that's really getting promoted. That's what showed as being acceptable and right, making your own form of family. But God set the standards for that before the foundations of the earth were laid. So everything that comes against that. In Jesus name. And um, Larry, I just want to lift up your friend Gary here with all of us on. So we just come against leukemia because the blood is the life. And so we come against that spirit of death in that leukemia in the blood and we lose life. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundant. We bind and break its power right now in Jesus Christ's name. We command the fungus to cease and reverse and be healed in Jesus Christ's name. We bind and break all, all the fear and all of the medical hexes that are spoken against him. You will, you won't. Um, Jesus has the ultimate say. And we have faith that, that Gary's life is his and that God will have his way. And so we know his will is to heal. And so we are lifting Gary up for total healing and, and, and a testimony that glorifies God for his deliverance from leukemia. Um, what else, Lord? Thank you, Father. And Father, all of these children today that are broken line with their emotions, these children that are confused, you bring yourself to each generation and you have known each generation would have the things that we have to um, fight and, and have conflict with. And so, Lord, we know that you will bring them. Counselors will arise around them to speak the word of God. You will bring these children who they need in due time time and in season. So Father, we thank you for their lives that they would come into the into the body of Christ. And Father, we thank you and we praise you and we love you so much. And Father, um thank you that you forgive us, that we are forgiven. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. It was a good show. It was a good show. We love you guys. Be sure to email us your questions. Yeah. Uh, Don't forget you, next week. Pop on next week. We're going to have a good time. Okay. So you're not telling them what it's about. It's just come, come. Okay. I was going to ask. Okay. Bye, guys. We love you. <laughs>